Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be discussing a problem from the code forces around 630, that is the phonics and the beauty. So what is the problem states? The problem states will be given a uh, T test cases and it'll be given as array of size N and it'll be given a number K. So what you have to do exactly is, so in this problem, uh, you'll be given an array, right? And it'll be given a K. And what you have to make sure is every sub array of this K size should have equal sum. So over here, we can say, the sub array of k size is 1, 2. So in this array, we can say the sub arrays of size 2 are this, this, and this. So if you try to find out the sum of this sub array, that is 3, of this is 4, of this is 3. So we can see that all the sub array sums of size k are not same. So how do you make them same? So your task is to, you got to insert elements, but then you're only allowed to insert elements either at the back or at the front or at the between any position but you're only allowed to insert elements which are in the range 1 to n inclusive so what does that mean over here n was 4 because that is the size of the array so you can insert either 1 either 2 either 3 or either 4 and in doing so you can insert any number of elements but what you need to make sure is once you've inserted the elements the size of the array does not exceeds 10 to the power of 4. Once you have inserted elements, you need to make sure that all the sub arrays of size k should have equal sum. So over here, so over here, what we can do is we can insert one over here. Let's say this is the thing that we have inserted. Now let's take all the sub arrays of size 2. So this is one of the sub arrays. This is one of the sub arrays. This is one of the sub arrays. And now this is one of the sub arrays. Sum of this sub array is 3. The sum of this sub array is also 3. The sum of this sub array is also 3 and the sum of this sub array is also 3. So since we have only inserted 1, 1 and we have figured out that the sum of all the sub arrays of size k are similar. But then you do not have any constraint on the number of elements that you need to insert. That means I can insert any number of elements that I require or I wish to. But the only constraint is whenever you are inserting elements, make sure the entire array size should not exceed and there can be multiple answers and you have to print any of them. So how do you solve such problems? So to solve such problems, uh, the first catch is whatever is given in your answer over here. Do not try to figure out an answer from here because the test cases are always formatted in such a way that they will never give you a pattern. My suggestion will be never see at your test cases answer. Rather, only read the question and try to get the uh, knack of the explanation that is given. And after that, try to generate your answers because there are multiple answers that can be found and possibly you can end up getting a pattern. And there's one more thing. If it is not possible uh, to insert elements such that every sub array has a sum equal, uh, then you got to print uh, minus one. So how do you solve such problems? To solve such problems, the first thing that you need to make sure is since you're taking sub arrays. So the catch over here is let's say this sub array has one, two, four, three. So the next sub array will be something like this. Now you need to make the sum equal, right? So to make the sum equal, you know, you're removing one from here. So the sum over here was one plus two plus four plus three, that is 10. And now you have two, four, three over here. So what is the element that you need to add? That is nothing but one itself, isn't it? Yes, it is. Otherwise you'll never find the sub array to have the same sum. So you add one over here. Now the next time you move forward, you remove two. So you got to add two. Why? Otherwise the sum will never be same because whatever you're removing on your backside, you got to add that because you're not taking two entirely different sub arrays. You're taking two sub arrays, which only differ by an element, right? Only the first element is different over here and over here the last element is different. So eventually we can figure out that the first element should be equal to this last element that I'm adding. So here comes an observation that every sub array will have an equal set of elements. That's it. So here comes an observation that every sub array should have equal set of elements because they will give a sum of S. Now, whenever you take the next sub array, they should have those equal elements to give you some S because you're only removing one and adding one more element. So yeah, the order might be different, but then we are adding up the elements. So the order doesn't matter. So the first catch is done. Now let's get to the next catch. Now, since you know, every sub array is same now, since you know the all the elements over here are equal to all the elements over here the order might be different 
are equal to all the elements over here and are equal to all the elements over here because the summation is equal and you know you're removing the last and you're adding the first element. So we can easily say that a maximum of k unique elements can only be there in the array. If there are more than k unique elements, we cannot arrange them. So the first trick is very clear that we must have less than equal to k unique elements in the array. Otherwise, the answer is not possible. Let's say your k is 3 and you have elements like 1, 2, 3, 4. So you have only space for 3, right? How will you plug in 4 different values? If you do so, then your sub array sum will never be equal. So you have figured out the condition for minus 1. Now let's figure out how will you uh, get your answer. So in the question it says, you can only insert elements in the between or in the end or in the front. So this actually means this order should be preserved. Whenever you have taken the entire array, the order should be preserved. Let's take this example where the array is given and k is 4. So the first thing that you need to find out what is the unique elements. So you know the unique elements is nothing but 1, 2 and 3. So what you need to do is you write 1, 2, 3 and since the sub array size is 4, append it with one more 1 to make it a sub array size of 4. We have done that, right? Now repeat this n times. So over here n was 7. Now repeat this pattern as n times 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1 and go on repeating it. So why does uh, this work? Because you know for sure you need to maintain the pattern 1, 2, 1. So in repeating the sub arrays, you know, you're making one thing for sure is the sum will be equal because you're eventually adding the previous number whenever you are removing it. So you have maintained your first property that the sum should be equal. And the next property you need to maintain is the order of 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 should be preserved. So why is the order preserved? Because what you are doing is by appending the number n times, what you are doing is you are appending the k sub array n times, isn't it? So in doing so, what you are doing, you are making sure is every number is present n times. And when you do so, you are very much sure that the pattern will be maintained because over here the length is only n and you are already taking k times length n. Hence, hence the order of the array is bound to maintain because every number occurs n times. Uh, if you put a bit of stress on your mind, you can observe that the pattern will eventually be maintained because, hey, I'm writing all the numbers n times. I can pick the number as my wish. If I want to pick one, let's pick it from here. If I want to pick two, let's pick it from here. If I want to pick one, let's pick it from here. If I want to pick two, let's pick it from two. Since there are n k sub arrays, I can pick every number from every sub array and the order will be maintained. So let's quickly have a dry run through the code. So what you do is you take scene of n and k and then you take the elements of the array and you push it into the set because we know we require the unique elements and we do a condition check that we had discussed if the number of unique elements is greater than k. At that case, we will never have an answer. So just print minus one. And since we know we are multiplying k sub arrays n times. So ultimately the size will stand at n into k. Now realize uh, this will suffice because the constraint of n is 100 and the constraint of k is 100. So 100 into 100, the maximum size will go up to 10 to the power of 4. Just, uh, we discussed in the starting that that is the maximum size that is allowed. Now what you do is you traverse for n times because n is the number of times you append sub arrays of size k. And for every time you append all the unique elements that is in the set, and for the remaining sizes, you append one to it. So once you have done the entire iteration, we can be very much assured that we have maintained the order and we have printed our new array by inserting elements. So the complexity over here will obviously be n into of n into k because you are printing n into k elements and you are creating that array. So guys, this is all about this code forces B problem from today's contest. In the next video, we'll be talking about code forces C from this contest itself. I hope you have liked the video. Just in case you have liked the video, do leave a like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And yes, do press the bell icon too to get notified.